Think about your past, the days you spent as a kid watching television. Consciously, you were having a blast. But did the stories you watched on television as a kid shape the way you constructed narratives in the real world? That will be the purpose of this study. Out of all 26 interviews conducted, we got a wide variety of responses from our participants. Out of these studies, these were the most popular shows. By far, Pokemon captured the lead. Pokemon just because they seemed like animals and they were like their pets or whatever and I always wanted a Pokeball that he would like, they were like so little, they were on his belt and then he would like take it out, press the little uh, white button and it would like expand and he would just catch them so I loved that. Uh, when Ash first met Pikachu and then Pikachu didn't want to listen to him and then Ash is like, no you gotta listen to me and then he wore rubber gloves and then tamed the Pikachu because he loved him and Pikachu realized that. Um, I thought Pikachu was really cute. Pokemon captured everyone's imagination. I think I think it was uh, it's just like you can have little pets on your own and they have magical powers. So that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, Pokemon. Uh, Ash and Misty should have gotten together, but they never did. Pokemon Digimon because they were about like young kids who were traveling around on their own, like meeting friends, catching animals. Independence too because none of the characters had parents that told them what to do so whenever my parents wanted to tell me what to do it was like yeah well Ash Ketchum could travel alone in Pallet Town and he's only 10. Yeah I think I just I like the fact that they were on a journey and they had these battles and they had to like train them. Every day when you're walking down the street everybody that you meet has an original point of view. <laughs> I just know that Arthur is just about an artwork and he just tried to live a normal life and Arthur was not only entertaining but it, was, it taught you like so many valuable lessons like especially for like Arthur or something I was really drawn into the characters and the storyline and that one was really interesting because like he was an animal but like with human qualities <laughs> but with Yu-Gi-Oh I liked that it was realistic in the sense that it wasn't realistic, but I could play with the cards and stuff. I like to duel my friends. In Yu-Gi-Oh, Tay and Yugi showed up together, but they never did. Sailor Moon, okay, um, let's see. I mean, ongoing theme in Sailor Moon was like the romance between her and Tuxedo Mask. You know, Sailor Moon transforming from this wimpy kid into this badass, like, that was kind of a common theme I really enjoyed. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. There'd always be like, she'd have, she'd like go to school and she'd have like some issues with her friends or something. And then maybe an issue with her boyfriend. But in the end it all resolves and it all works out. The Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh, that was just, that was just entertaining. <laughs> Dragon Tales. Yeah, it was just like an imaginary land that these two kids named Max and Emmy they would go to an imaginary place where there were dragons. I liked Are You Afraid of the Dark because it was scary. Reading Rainbow because me and my sisters love reading, so we'd watch that all the time and then read the books. I think from Hey Arnold, the thing I'll always remember is that Helga really liked Arnold, but he just wasn't interested in that at all. Doug was, you know, kind of like, you know, older kids hanging out, and um, so it was kind of interesting to me. I oh, Bill Nye the Science Guy because that was really interesting because we didn't really understand anything about science. Digimon was by far the best because I just love how the, the Digimon digivolved and then how they had crests. The characters of the shows we watch play a major part in shaping our understanding of the stories embedded within them. If we can identify more with a character, the show has more of an effect upon us. Here are some significant characters in the lives of our interviewees. Well, I really liked Lizzie McGuire, but I thought she was... I still... I don't know, I thought that she maybe could be my friend, maybe, so I think that's why I liked her. When I watched the Lizzie McGuire show, um, I thought she was pretty funny, and the way she kind of like talked to herself, journal her life, um, that was me a lot. I used to write a lot, read a lot. I think I really liked Lizzie McGuire and how like down to earth she was with people, and she, I felt like she was very genuine um, and just fun. 
and kind of dorky, so I felt like that's something that I still like about that character. I guess with the Berenstain Bears, they, were, they went through like the same little like childish problems that I probably went through. I think his name was TK, he was like this really nerdy kid. I uh, always buried himself in his computer. When I was younger, I definitely I could relate myself to him because I was kind of like that. I didn't bury myself in the computer, but I was more academic. I like, admired Spike from Cowboy Bebop. I just thought he was like the most certifiable badass. And I guess I, I understand Ash wanting to catch them all because they're pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Misty in Pokemon, I always kind of admired her. I was like, oh, she's like so pretty and stuff. <laughs> and Arthur, like Francine was super bossy. So you? I was really bossy because I was the older child, so. I really like Sailor Moon, like actual Sailor Moon, um, but I find her really annoying now. Joe from Digimon, he had the crest of reliability and he was always there for people when they needed him. Like, Here are some narratives of the participants regarding childhood experiences watching television. Three or four hours a day. I'd say maybe about an hour a day average. On a weekend, I'd probably watch like maybe eight hours of TV a day, but on a weekday, maybe like three. We used to be, when we were little, my mom would let us watch like two, like two shows every night, and that was about it. I would say definitely a minimum of three. Probably like three hours a day, three or four. Three to four hours on Saturday, and during the weekdays, I'll try to sneak in an hour or two. Maybe an hour or two hours a night at most. Uh, way more than I should have. Mm. Um, I remember waking up every Saturday and Sunday and just watching for like probably two hours in the morning. Every Saturday and Sunday, they always had new shows, so that was always something to look forward to. I would wake up every Saturday at 7 a.m. willingly to watch TV. Um, I would wake up early on Saturday because I was obsessed with Yu-Gi-Oh! and that was like my number one childhood show. I mean the usual, I'd wake up at like 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning and then all my favorite shows had their like new episodes out and then I'd be really happy about that. I had an after school program every day when I was in elementary school so I came home around 6 o'clock at night every day and I would go through an hour of or 45 minutes of Friends just to catch The Simpsons. Mm. Played a lot of golf. My parents really limited what I watched on TV, um, so no violence at all. I remember sometimes like we'd be watching a show that we would like, or like, we as in my sisters, and then my my dad would just come and be like, "Oh, watch this. It's better." We didn't get to watch um, anything with with violence in it or adult shows, so they really didn't like that I watched like Sabrina and the Teenage Witch because they thought it was like more of an adult show, even though. Yeah, I don't know. And then we weren't allowed to watch like, like Pokemon or, or like Spider Man. Uh, well, mostly like, when I would come home from school, I would play outside with like the other kids in my neighborhood, um, and I'd maybe watch TV for like, a couple hours every day, but not like all the time. Like if it was light out, I wanted to be outside. On the weekdays, my mom, uh, my grandma would make me watch The Price Is Right, and like. Soap operas with her. Um, part of like my uh, uh, my development as a child with television was, you know, my my mom and dad got divorced for a lot of reasons. One of them was their, you know, different ideas about parenting styles. And I chose. I mean, my mom kept us, so for a while we were exposed pretty much exclusively to um, just, you know, being babied and getting whatever we want. So I was, we were allowed to watch a lot of television. There were no restrictions. There was. You know, I, uh, I was pretty much addicted to watching TV and playing video games. I was hanging out in front of this uh, construction place, and I was being stupid. I was walking along the plank, and it was like 6 p.m., and Sailor Moon was on at 6 p.m. And so I was like, oh no, I have to get home. And so I was running along this little plank thing, trying to get home, because you know I was stupid, I didn't want to get off the plank and just walk home like a normal person. And so I fell, and there was this nail that was stuck like up and so I fell straight on it and there's I still have the scar and my dad had to take me to um, down to the city which is like 30 minutes away on like a little like motorcycle and so I went down there and got a tetanus shot I never watched Sailor Moon that day okay. well I went to school and I came home around two three I think that was normal for um, an elementary schooler and my parents weren't home yet because they were at work and I don't know where my brother was 
So um, basically all I had, I was like, I was alone. So I basically just ate and then I like turned on the TV to watch whatever there was on the TV. So my the TV was kind of like my my companion when I was at home. And then sometimes I would go out and play with the neighborhood kids. Um, so that was basically my life. It was like school, TV, and hang out with neighborhood kids. So. I remember waking up really early in the morning, like 7.30. And the thing is, I always had to ask my parents for permission to watch TV because they didn't trust me with television. So like I would have to knock on their door, wake them up, and then they got kind of annoyed at me. But you know, it was all fun. I mean, I really looked forward to TV coming home from school. I would follow storylines a lot and memorize TV schedules, but that was about it. Um, I remember that. I I think my brother used to stay home with me when my mom was at work. Since she was a single mom, she worked a lot. And um, so I would always watch TV, and then as soon as she got home, it was always around that time when they started doing those, like, kids running through obstacle course TV shows. Mm. And that was right when she always got home, and she's always like, why are you watching TV? You need to turn it off. Um, and my dad's house, so I watched a lot more of, like, TV on video. Um, so I remember because their TV was in their room, and I always lay on their bed and watch Ren and Stimpy, so. Watched Pokemon, like, every single, every single week. I would, like, wait up until, like, I forgot what time it started. It was, like, 5 o'clock. It would be, like, 4.59, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. And uh, I would even tape it. We used to use VHS tapes and record them on there. So I would tape it, and I followed it every week. Um, and on Saturday morning, we always had Saturday Saturday morning cartoons, so we'd watch um, Batman Begins and um, Jackie Chan Adventures, those were my favorites. Uh, so, I don't know if you remember it, but there was a show called Kablam, and it was this awesome variety show. I want to say it was on Nick, and it was like part claymation, part animation, part stop motion, and they had this uh, stop motion video, um, Kurt, it was like a, like I said, a variety show, and they had these action figures that they stop motion animated to um, go on adventures and there was this caveman who was like Conan the Barbarian and there was like a sexy Barbie doll and all these like kind of like Toy Story but really like crude and ridiculous and um, my siblings and I were convinced that they stole the idea from us you know as homeschooled kids because we would sit in our um, we would all lock ourselves in the bathroom because um, it was one of the only rooms in the house where you could be guaranteed privacy and we would just play action figures and we would narrate their lives and they would go on adventures and it was um, hilarious and a lot of in-jokes came from it and that was like we, we, we essentially created a TV show that, that was on the air after we started playing and we were convinced that they took the idea <laughs> from us. Our collective identities formed around television shows. To find out, we asked the participants whether or not they felt closer to their friends because of the shows they watched as a kid. It gives us something to talk about, and I mean, like when they come out with toys for the shows and stuff, we get the toys and we like pretend we're the characters on the show. And I mean, I'm pretty sure at least 50% of the time, if I was hanging out with my friends, it was because of something TV related. So I don't really remember like people talking about shows that much, or if they did, they were like the really popular shows, like Pokemon, that people uh, knew most of, like a lot about. Like I know a lot about Pokemon, and that's what people would sit around talking about. Yeah, there's a common bond if you actually watch the same episode. Like shows? No. We were closer because we played at night it with paper lanterns and Do TV shows. Or I definitely remember this one girl who was Japanese and um, she got like Pokemon cards from her grandparents in Japan. So I was definitely closer to her because of it because Pokemon was really big during that time. So I remember we would trade cards. She like ripped me off one time and she like took my Charizard, my shiny one. Anyways, so we <laughs> oh definitely watched like uh, Pokemon. Uh, we watched Pokemon in her house, and we had snacks. And oh, I remember actually we played Sailor Moon together too. Yeah, so I guess I got close to her. She was really nice. I don't Maybe. think I don't think it had too much impact um, on being close to people. Talk to my siblings, and it, actually my sister, my oldest sister, and I are. Um, I'm the oldest, but she's the next oldest, and she and I are very close. Um, primarily because of the TV shows we watch. So if we wanted to, we could just not even start speaking normal language and communicate only in in-jokes derived from television shows. We'd be able to get along just fine. Not really. I mean, a lot of us watch different shows.
With inconclusive results, we asked the participants who watched less television whether or not they felt left out. Yeah, I'd say so sometimes. Like, it's just something that people can bond over. And I didn't have that bond. I guess when a lot of them were, like, collecting their binders full of Pokemon cards, I would feel like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, feel left out. I don't think TV was a big thing that we had in common. Um, no, I can't say that I felt closer to the ones who watched the same things, but I guess maybe... If there were shows that became really, really popular that I wasn't a part of, th there were times where maybe I felt left out. Like, you know, I didn't really do the whole Pokemon thing, and so that would be like an example of one, I guess. I mean, I think I had other reasons for being left out, just because I moved a lot when I was younger. Um, but I, I had other things that I did. I did horseback riding, and I had a lot of friends through that. And I also read a lot of books, and I had other friends that really liked to read. Um, so I wouldn't say it, it left me out. <laughs> Yeah, when everybody was like, you know, when everybody was collecting Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards, like, I wasn't into all that, and I didn't watch it as much as everybody else, so I didn't feel cool, I guess. I wasn't part of the club. With all these answers contradicting one another, we decided the conclusion was too close to call. This brings us to our next point of review, which will be the main goal of this video to see whether or not television can affect the ability to construct narratives. Yeah, never give up. Because growing up, I never really talked to my parents, so I never knew what was right or wrong until I figured it out then. But like, yeah, I remember learning about friendship and how important it is and not lying. Well, yeah, in a way, like, the lessons that were taught in the shows, I, like, incorporated into my life. And I'm glad that I watched shows that were pretty wholesome and, like, in, in contrast to the other shows that they showed on, like, more cable networks were, like, more violent, violence-focused or, like, more humor-based. I think Arthur was, like, my favorite show and it had a lot of wholesome values and taught a lot of morals that I don't think kids get these days. The main thing for my personality was my parents and the people I associated with. But I, but I, yeah, I, I definitely think the shows um, inspired me. I know like when I would watch a ninja show, I would try and like act like a ninja. So I mean that definitely <laughs> shaped, shaped how aggressive I was. Dude. Whenever I acted around my friends, I'd just act more rowdy and Whenever we had those poker walkers, we'd usually get in like fights. Well, not fights, like play fights for fun. And you know, we were just generally louder and more fun when we talked about these kind of things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I pretty much based everything off those shows, like what I would do in real life. They were a huge influence. With Cartoon Network, um, there was there's a lot of hegemony. Like a lot of people exposed to, exposed to the same cartoons. So as for like shaping me as a unique individual, I don't think so. It might have a more broader cultural effect on people, like all people watching the same cartoons, maybe the effects would be the same. I think so. I mean, going back to Hey Arnold, I feel like a lot of them ended with Arnold always doing the right thing, even if he made a mistake earlier. So I feel like maybe that did kind of teach me, like, at least here's what is right and wrong. Like, it might not necessarily make me want to do the right thing all the time, but at least it helps you. It helps kids understand, like this is this is what's right and this is what's wrong. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say, I'd say when you're that young, anything can influence like your 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 outlook on life and who you become and how you view the world. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we are all a product of culture, whether we like it or not. And I received more than most, um, simply by virtue of the fact that. That was all I had at the time. So, uh, yeah, like memes or or what would be recognized as memes post-internet age, um, shows and jokes like it formed a, a huge part of my core identity, and that's why when those I think same with a lot of kids though. So whenever those Nickelodeon nostalgia threads pop up on Facebook or YouTube, people just go nuts because you know we all define ourselves by that to a great mm -hmm. degree. Um, yeah, I think they did. How so? Like, I. I... I don't know, with the whole boy culture thing. That's why I feel like I, I could I could relate to boys as, as a kid a lot more because we had like those shows in common, I guess. We kind of learned more about what they were into. Um, yeah, but it, it kind of like 
took me away from my female friends, I guess, because I didn't watch, like, like, I watched Disney movies and stuff, but I didn't really watch, yeah, I think I grew up with the idea of, like, the whole inviting your prince charming and stuff, and whenever I would, we would, like, fantasy, do, like, a little role play and stuff, like, I would always, I would have to be the girl, obviously, and be the one that was always, like, saved and stuff. I guess because I wasn't such an imaginative kid, like, these shows, like, were very creative, and I think that they helped me a little bit, you know, open up my imagination. Um, they were very unrealistic, though, now that you look at it, like, you know, flying dragons and stuff, but... Wow. But, yeah, I mean, it's fun to watch, and I think they, they helped shape it a little, but... Yes, a lot, actually, like... I think like because of the show, some of the shows I learned to be a little more aggressive. I used to be like a really, really timid person. So I was I'm like able to speak for myself more. But I, I guess they serve as a good role model, I guess. Like everything I know today, I mean not maybe not everything, but like a majority of what I know today about like American society I think came from television shows. Yes, I think it did. Um because they have like very intricate plots and stuff and things that I would never think of myself so like when I you know when you're given the idea I think that you can just run with it and create your own thing I've actually been I've gotten to make up some cool stories oh really for what I don't know just for like essays and stuff like that like throughout middle school and high school and you I, think these shows help to shape yeah um, because, yeah, I wasn't very imaginative myself, so I felt like they helped me do that. I think if, if back then when I didn't watch a lot of TV, a lot of my, my narratives and my stories would be more original. My imagination would be more original. But, I mean, if we're talking about now, after, like, so many years of having so many influences, I think... My imagination is definitely skewed and biased by these television shows. Uh, yeah, I'm going back to the whole imagination, growing imagination. I feel like if I'm able to like just like construct something out of thin air in that sense, like it would help me definitely tell a story and imagine things. All right. Show that like uh, helps kids to imagine things. Like for example, uh, Pokemon and Digimon. It's like uh, the idea that you know there are these like pocket monsters that keep around and like a little tiny football and things like that. It made me think about you know, certain things and like, imagine certain things and it really made my imagination grow into that sense. But I feel like if it's to the point where the child just watches the TV without imagining, like without actually you know giving much thought to this imagination without um, letting it grow, then it then I guess it does become a hindrance, you know, in that sense. It makes it makes sense. I don't think it was hindered. I think you have to use your imagination more when you don't have something shown to you. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. My, especially with, like, Dexter's Lab, um, that was always, like, really fun, like, as, as a creative kind of thing. You, you see this person being creative, and even though you don't really get into technical details, you can see. Like, if you've got Legos lying around, you can maybe try to replicate the robots or even build your own. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd say like certain shows increased uh, my imaginative. Well, I mean, not to brag or anything, but I was a pretty creative kid. I think cartoons gave me some ideas, but I would have probably come up with them myself. Oh, I think definitely increased. Uh, like I said, with the Lizzie McGuire show, my sisters and I, we ended up writing this like long play about like extending the whole like idea of like this master character and his grasshopper learning like kung fu like we created this entire script off of it and we actually recorded it um, and played it for our family so that helped definitely it's How just, so? i mean they were all very imaginative shows things like dragon tales like it's all in your imagination and i think it helped us um kind of think outside the box you know i have no imagination i'm pretty sure it didn't either definitely helped. I think um, it, it helped with just imagining the end, I guess. Um, especially when you kind of like have your own bad guy. It's like, how can I make this a happy ending? Or how can I defeat him? Or yeah, that's kind of what I would say. Uh, yeah. Why? Mm, I don't know. 
yeah, because they opened up something different that I wasn't used to, and it, well, I guess not used to, but they they enabled me to just um, I don't know. I wrote a lot of stories as a little kid, and um, I guess they do kind of take from those uh, those shows or those movies that I watched, like little characters that I kind of pull out, like the little character chase, and I would just like uh, put them on in my little stories and. I like writing a lot of romance stories. TV tends to show the same thing over and over again because that's what people like. So I feel like by not watching all that TV, it was kind of like I had the chance to think up my own characters. And, you know, as, as a writer now, I feel like that was helpful. That mm. Increase Because um, these shows are not of the norm. In order to, you know, create these shows, you'd have to be think of so many, you know, different things, like the new worlds, new Pokemon, new Digimon. And by watching these shows, you know, I constantly thought of new things. Uh, I think both. Because it helps because it gave me more ideas with which to build upon for my imagination. And hindered because I mean obviously I couldn't create my own ideas if I was given the storyline. <laughs> Because um, through reading a lot, I had to come up with my own ideas of what these things looked like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that because of that, when, now when I see movies, say the Harry Potter movies, I'm actually really disappointed with right. how they turn out because that's not how I imagined it. Whereas I think if I had grown up watching more TV and reading less and having those things made up for me, my imagination wouldn't have been as developed about what I, um, you know, was reading and seeing in, in life. Increased it. I would like watch the shows and be inspired by what they were doing, and like go out and try to have, like do what they were doing. Like if they were like playing make believe in a show, I would want to do the same kind of thing. Based on how these stories were told, it kind of showed me how to tell my own stories. So I followed the way that these like directors narrated their own plots, and I found myself kind of reflecting or paralleling how they tell stories. I don't think it really did either. Maybe increase a little bit, but like I said, I think the majority of uh, imagination increasing was from reading, not so much from watching. Uh, they increased my imagination. I always imagined having friends and what I do, and being outspoken on how going on an adventure. <clears throat> um, it's really hard to say. I started watching when when I was really little, so I felt like because I, I held myself to a high degree of um, maturity and I was trying to always be more mature and act more grown up than I really was, it was hard for me to really develop any sense of imagination, but I, I do think this, that TV helped me to develop a sense of imagination, like it made me feel that it was acceptable. Um, yeah, I think so, because, I mean, you do, you learn from TV, and I think from that you're able to maybe kind of, like, mix and match, and you can make your own story by watching, watching how other people tell stories. Well, it's like practice, I guess. Like, if you, like, practice the one thing, you're going to get better. I mean, sometimes practice kind of involve, like, seeing other examples. And because it gave me an outlet instead of just having all this pent-up energy and stuff and not knowing what to do with it. I'd say increase simply because <coughs> I don't think anyone was is without influence. So the people who came up with these shows were still probably in their own way building upon other things. And I think the more culture you absorb, the more capable you are of rearranging and spitting out something that seems original. Um, even though it may not truly be, I really don't think that many things truly are. So um, I wouldn't see that as a problem. Um, yeah, tell to, to the, yeah, to the extent that they introduced me to archetypes and possibilities that I might not have been able to come up with my own, uh, yeah, and I think that I don't think there's anything wrong with that from a creation standpoint. You're, you're influenced by something and then you take it a step further. You're, you're still influenced by it, but you can still come up with things on your own. A majority of our participants said that television helped to increase their imagination. But we weren't about to just take their word value for it. We were about to test them. Participants were shown these three images and asked to construct a narrative based upon them. Here are their responses. 
Based upon the first image, participants struggle with the most coming up with a fresh new narrative. Obviously, this girl is in trouble of some sort, and this, this boy comes along, and they probably have some sort of relationship, and he's protecting her. Okay, well, they are in trouble. They're very, very scared, and they're in school, and they're obviously are attracted to each other because they're holding each other, and something big is coming. The world is ending, maybe. This looks like... This looks like it's either a boyfriend and girlfriend, or, or maybe even a brother and sister. Like, they, they look like they're, they're shocked by what they're looking at, and, um, like, really apprehensive, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. I just watched the show, too. Um, they look like they're fighting off someone who's, like, bullying them, possibly, or one of their, like, little demon, evil villains. Yeah. But they, yeah, he looks like he's protecting her and Sakura's scared and frightened. Um, some kind of monster and the boy is kind of protecting the girl and they're staring at it. Okay. They look to be quite afraid, well, she does at least, and he looks to be kind of like protecting her from something. So the girl at school and she is walking outside of the uh, school in the playground and she sees that one of her friends is being beaten up and she's really worried and she's she wants to help the kid but i mean she's a small weak little girl so she can't do much and she decides okay well i'm gonna go help the kid anyways i'll try to do something and she's about to run in and fight the other guys but then her best friend who's also a guy comes and says no no no, i'll take care of this i got this and then he's getting ready to fight right now okay well this one the girl is like she's um, scared and it looks like maybe her parents um, told her that she can't go out with this boy and so she looks scared because her parents just found them together but he's kind of being protective of her because maybe her parents aren't very friendly and nice to her and so he's protecting her from them. Oh no I'm so scared what should I do? Well it's kind of a talking bear and you kind of have <laughs> magical powers and so maybe you should do something about it no, I'm too much of a whiny wimp to do anything. <laughs> Come on, you're really going to do it. Well, okay. Participants struggle in creating new narratives for familiar terrain. In this case, Pokemon. Okay, so... Oh god, because I know Pokemon, I can't shy away from the fact that it's Pikachu, but right. he meets his pet for the first time. Pets looking confused, so um, I don't know. It's not your typical animal, it's sort of a fantasy character. Um, pet was given to him by the doctor in the background. Um, he's a professor, Professor Oak. Yeah, I can't do a narrative for Pokemon. All right. Holding uh, somewhat of a yellow rat, and um, he seems kind of happy because he just found this rat out of nowhere, and that's his. Uh, he's giving it to his grandpa or showing it to his grandpa for approval and um he had to go through some trouble to catch this rat because this rat well this yellow rat was squirming through a, a, bus, a bush of thorns and ash really wanted to capture it so he dove and tackled the rat struggled and that's why he's all messed up and dirty boy who just found this cute little yellow cat and he's adopting it from this old man in a white coat and they're gonna be best friends for life. This little boy who's never had a pet before and his old grandpa um, has too many rat things as pets in his lab so he gave him away to his grandson and now he's forced to take care of him oh maybe this is like maybe it's like a kid at a petting zoo or like a kid who's learning to be some kind of like veterinarian or something and and the doctor behind him is uh is you know sh showing him what this animal is the guy um who had a huge rodent problem <laughs> and then he finally got this one professional um rodent killer i guess to capture this huge rat for him. And the rat eventually dies, somehow turns yellow, and the guy is holding, him, uh, holding the rat in his hands.
This image from Arthur easily garnered the most creative responses from our participants. They're holding cards. Okay, so they're walking around the street, and I feel like, um, I don't know, they're in a big group, so they're all holding something. So I guess the story of it would be that they all got something that everybody wants. Probably okay. the cool kids have. They're like in a big group, and they're holding stuff. So I don't know, yeah. But they're all about to do something, because they all have something in their hand. What would you say is in there? I don't know what it is that they're going to do. Maybe you... it's like they're sending letters to someone. Like they're going to put it, or they're, or they're voting, or something. Something where they're, they have to all bring this. Kids are looking like they've all, oh, they've all got some popular coupon out of a magazine. So they're going to the store to get that awesome thing. Mm -hmm. They're holding like tickets. And they look super happy, so I think they're probably going to go see a movie together or something. We're heading to a concert, actually, because these are concert tickets. They're doing a commercial advertising for some political party. They're holding tickets to go somewhere, and um, they're a big group of friends, and so maybe after school they all decided they were going to go see a movie together. Um, they're holding some kind of I don't know, magic cards that okay. transform them to animals. Like they are <laughs> advertising for a concert that they want to hold and it's a charity concert. They're trying to raise money for a school trip. Are oh, they look like phone cards. Mm -hmm. um, family walking down the street going to go see a movie. They're walking on the street and they have, I think, library cards in their hands. So they're probably going to the library mm -hmm. to read. Um, and they all look really happy. So it's kind of reinforcing the idea of reading is a good thing. Tickets to a movie. They're holding something. They're holding cards. They're probably library cards. They're going to the library together with their friends. And they're making a group out of it. And it's fun because it's an educational show. And people should like libraries. And um, there's a bunch of people from different ethnicities walking around. You can see there's like a black guy and then a white guy, the rabbit. And then they're just basically strolling, checking out the neighborhood. They have these bus passes because um, they were recently just on a bus. And they're probably going to eat. Okay. So Arthur and his friends recently got bus passes. <gasps> That means they could travel all around the city without mom and dad. This is very exciting for Arthur and friends, because now they're finally going to the park across the city. Thugs wearing like brightly colored sweaters, and they're walking down the street like they're... <laughs> and they're all holding cards. I think they're going to a concert. Do you know where they're actually going? They're going to the library. <laughs> Well, it looks like these uh, greasers and these cholos are trying to like gang up on each other. They have some kind of gang war going on here, and they're like fighting with these um, credit cards or something. So there are a bunch of friends walking down the street, and then uh, there's a rival gang coming down at them from both sides. A pincer attack is happening. I don't know what they're gonna do. Oh shoot, it's gonna be bloody. And those are their gang IDs. <laughs> Okay, so um, Arthur and his friends, um, Arthur heard from an older kid about how you can get a fake ID and you can get into all the cool clubs. So Arthur and his uh, friends went to the shady part of town and they found the kid who made him fake IDs. And they're not really using them for very much right now. Um, they haven't figured out quite what they're going to do with them, but they're really, really happy and excited. See, they all have these like ID cards in their hands, so they all got their fake IDs and they're ready to go clubbing tonight. These tests help to reiterate and show that this study remains ultimately inconclusive. More studies will perhaps need to be done to gauge whether television is a major factor in influencing the creative narrative making capabilities of our participants. Regardless of whether or not they watched very little TV, were avid or casual viewers, the responses of our participants mostly paralleled one another based upon the images they received. In our participants' responses to the pictures from both card captures and Pokemon, their responses ultimately remain unimaginative and mostly copies of pre-existing stories they might have been exposed to at a younger age. However, hope remains based on their responses to the picture from Arthur, a show less people might have watched. 
Subsequently, we conclude that their encounter with a newer image gave them the ability by which to construct a newer narrative and not simply copy a pre-existing one. We can subsequently say television does have some sort of an impact on narrative-making capabilities. Ultimately, though, one will need to do further research to come up with a definitive answer to what extent it does so.